Okay, so in this problem, we're given a demand equation, which includes a price and the number of units. And we're also given the equation for the total revenue, which is a function of the demand equation in terms of price and units, as well as the units. So the best way to go about solving this problem is to first solve for x, and then using that x, solve for p. So here's how I've started going about solving this problem. So we know that r equals px, and we know what p equals. p equals 104 minus 0 0.015x. So we can just plug that in. And now we can say r equals 104 minus 0 0.015x times x. And we can multiply that x out, resulting in the equation on the far right, r equals 104x minus 0.015x squared. And then below, I've just rewritten it in a different order, which is easier for the way we're going to be solving it. And we know what R is. Our revenue that we want to assess for is $5,670. So we can just go ahead and plug it in. Now, what we want to do is solve for the X, which we have an X squared, which means we're going to have to take the square root. But this equation doesn't just give you a square root. So we have to do something called completing the square which is finding this third term, which is going to make it so that we can take the square root of the right side of the equation. So to do that, there's gonna be a lot of multiplying and dividing, and I don't want decimals. So I just turned that 0 0.015 into a fraction and made it three over 200. And now we can get rid of that three over 200 by dividing both sides of the equation by 3 over 200. But we know that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're just going to go ahead and multiply both sides by that. And that's going to leave us with what we have at the bottom. Now we're going to just take this right side and we're going to go into a new board and we're going to work on completing that square. So when we complete the square, we're making a square like we have over here. And we just need to find this side. We have one part of the side is x. What's the other side? Now, we can see from this equation that what you're doing when you complete the square is you take this number and divide it by 2 to get this side. So the 2 becomes a 1. And down here, the 6 becomes a 3 and then we square it to get this third number. So a one and a nine, which means that if we go over to this equation, to get that third number, all we would do is take this and half it, leaving 10,400 over three, and then square it, well, negative 10,403 squared. So that's gonna give us the whole thing, which factored as a square, is going to be this. Okay, so now we have that, we can plug that in. So we know that whenever we have to add something on one side of the equation, we have to add it on the other. So I went ahead and added that negative 10,400 over three squared to both sides. Now on the left, we can just plug that in, really easy assess for it. And on the right, we can simplify it to that square, that factored form. And now that it's factored, we can just take the square root of both sides. So we take the square root of that big ugly number and we get this and we have that plus or minus. That plus or minus is important when we're taking square roots. And then we just add 10,400 over 3 to both sides and we get these two numbers, 6,878.37 and 54.96. Now we can just take those x's and plug them in to our equation for p right here, leaving us with 82 cents and $103.18.